Alessandro asks, how do you determine the value of a salary in Bitcoin for you and your employers, a monthly or weekly or daily average in USD, referring to an exchange at the moment of payment fixed in BTC for a certain amount of time? Is there a method you advise to do a fair choice? Thank you so much. So um, this has a lot to do with the difference between using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange or Bitcoin as a unit of account. Uh, and I don't use Bitcoin as a unit of account. I use Bitcoin as a medium of exchange and a store of value. But um, when it comes to doing accounting within my own business and my personal life also, uh, when it comes to paying salaries to contractors, for example, or employees who live abroad, I will uh, denominate the salary in U.S. dollars. I will account for all payments in U.S. dollars. Why? Because that's the currency I use for accounting because I report my taxes here in the U.S., and therefore I need to report them in the units of account that the country uses. That's essentially the concept of legal tender. Because the US dollar is legal tender, because it's the only currency that is accepted for paying taxes, and because I have to account for all of my taxes in US dollars, that's the unit I use for pricing. So if I'm paying an employee, I will say, okay, your pay is $100 for this period of time that you worked. Um, and if that contractor or employee says, uh, I would like to get paid in Bitcoin, then at the moment of payment, I pay the Bitcoin equivalent of $100. This is exactly the same as the way I get paid from uh, parties that hire me for my services using Bitcoin. So if, for example, I'm speaking at a conference, and that conference is a commercial conference, which I charge for, and they pay me in Bitcoin. I will quote them, and I will say, okay, it's going to cost $100 for me to speak at your conference, and I'll send them an invoice for $100 with a Bitcoin address below it. At the moment of payment, as agreed on my contract, they will make a payment in Bitcoin at the equivalent rate of $100 US dollars um, based on the exchange rate of that moment. I specify a particular exchange rate provider uh, for all of my contracts in order to have consistency. Because as you know, different exchanges might be showing a different exchange rate, usually small fluctuations, so I don't particularly care. Um, but I need to have something consistent so that I know that all of the payments in and out uh, of my accounts have consistent exchange rates between them. So if someone's paying me, and they ha use an exchange rate, and I'm paying somebody else, and I use an exchange rate, it should be the same exchange rate. In order to do that, I specify in my contracts what the source of the exchange rate is. So you could say, payable with the exchange rate at the time of payment according to Coinbase.com, or according to the BitcoinAverage.com website, or according to uh, the Chicago Bitcoin uh, reference rate uh, for the Chicago uh, Mercantile Exchange, whatever it may be. Um, as long as you're consistent, that's all that matters. Uh, and really, small fluctuations don't matter that much. Daiva asks, uh, could Bitcoin be a standard for other cryptocurrencies as once gold was for money? Uh, the answer is yes, Bitcoin is already in effect the reserve currency for uh, all other cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin has the largest amount of liquidity. It's the first cryptocurrency that is traded on the vast majority of exchanges. It has the most uh, exchanges and trading pairs against fiat currencies and other cryptocurrencies. Um, and it has the largest market capitalization, which therefore makes it by default, the reserve currency of the internet of money. It's already happened. That's exactly what's happened. Will it stay like that? We don't know. But right now, Bitcoin is the reverse reserve currency of the internet of money.